Okay, so welcome to the next chapter of AS Pure Mathematics. In this video, we're going to have a look at everything to do with straight line graphs. So we're gonna focus on looking at the equation of a line, how we approach perpendicular lines, a little bit of a look at lengths and area, and then also we're gonna finish on looking at modeling with straight lines. Now, as with all of these videos, this is just a broad overview of what's included within this chapter. In order to fully go into any, each topic, you do need to go into the description and have a look at the topic videos. So we'll have a look at that in just a second, but obviously if this video and all, if all these chapter videos are useful and helpful, please don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, but let's have a look at how to use this video. So when you are on one of these videos, if you pause the video and have a look in the bottom left, you can click on the chapters and you will see that this brings up all of the chapters either on the side or down below the video that shows you everything that's included. So you can skip through, you can have a look, you can focus on particular ones maybe that you haven't heard of or that you're not so sure on. And then if you go into the description, you will also see that down below all of the topics are listed. Now in this video here, next to each of those topics, there will be a a link to the full lesson on each of those topics so that you can watch the full lesson if needed. This video on the screen covers the entire AS level and unfortunately there wasn't enough uh, um, text size to be allowed to fit them all in so it's not on this particular video but if you want to watch this video too that covers the entire of AS Pure Mathematics that will be linked in the top of the description. So there we go that's how to go about using this video so let's get started. Okay, so this question says, find the equation of the line that passes through the coordinates five, seven, and three, and negative one. So when we are finding equations of straight lines, there are two formulas that we need. One is to find the gradient, which is that m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the change in y over change in x. And the second thing that we're gonna need is our equation of a line, which is y minus y1, is equal to m brackets x minus x1. Of course, you can use y equals mx plus c still, but this equation is just a little bit quicker. But again, you can use y equals mx plus c whenever you like. So if we plug these values in, and we'll have this as our first coordinate and three negative one as our second coordinate. Okay, so if we find our gradient to start with, that is gonna be y2 minus y1. So we will have negative one, take away the first one, which is seven over, 3 take away the first one which is 5. So on the top that comes out as negative 8 and the bottom that comes out as negative 2 so we have a gradient of 4. So we can just say that the gradient is equal to 4. We can then put that into our equation of a line so we're just going to substitute that into y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And if we sub these pieces in, and again, I'm just going to use the first coordinate there, so five and seven, and if we substitute those in, we get y minus seven is equal to four lots of x minus five. And all we have to do is expand this and make it y equals, and we will have our line equation. So we have y minus seven is gonna be equal to four x minus 20, and then you just need to add seven to both sides, so we get y is equal to four x minus 13. And there we go, we have our line equation done. Okay, so find the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals two minus three x that passes through the point six, five. So first things first, let's get the gradient out of this. Now it's written in a slightly different way because it's got a negative gradient, but on our gradient there is negative three, the number in front of the x. So let's write that down, m equals negative three. Straight away, we're finding a perpendicular line, so let's find the perpendicular gradient. So mp, change it to positive, flip it over, it becomes a third. Right, so we just need to put a third into our line equation. So writing down y equals mx plus c. And then let's put this gradient in. So we get y equals a third x plus c. Right, from there, same process again. So we're gonna sub this coordinate in, six, five, as that coordinate is on our line. So five equals y. So five equals one third times the x coordinate, which is six plus c. 
Right, let's expand that little bracket out so we get five equals now one third times six. You can treat this in two different ways. You could do a bit of working out for this if you want. If you times a third by six, remember six is six over one, so you can just treat it like normal fractions. You get six over three, and six over three equals two. And when you times a fraction by a whole number, it just multiplies the numerator. So six times a third is six thirds, and when six thirds is two. Okay, but you can also just think when it's a fraction times six, if it's a nice one, a third of six or a third times six is just one third of six. So six divided by three equals two. So you can do it in two different ways there. Just depends how confident you are with your fractions here. But you can always just treat it in this sense up here. So six times a third is six thirds and simplify it down. And in this case, it does become a whole number. So five equals two plus C. And then again, if we solve that for C, subtract two from both sides we get three equals C or C equals three as our value of C there. There we go, so we've got our Y intercept now, we can put it back into this line equation and we get Y equals one third X plus the three there that we've just worked out. Okay, so this question here says that the straight line L1 has equation four X minus Y equals zero and L2 with the equation two X plus three Y minus 21 equals zero intersect at point A. Work out the area of the triangle AOB where B is the point where L2 meets the axes. So if we were to draw a sketch of this just to imagine what it looks like, which can help with these questions, we could imagine what these graphs are gonna look like. Now for the first one, that's quite easy to rearrange. You get y is equal to 4x. So for that first one, y is equal to 4x has a y-intercept of 0, and it has quite a high gradient, so it looks something like this. For the next one, again, we can make that uh, as has 3y at the start. We could make it as um, y equals as well. But if we just move the, the 2x and the minus 21 over, we'd have that 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 21. Now if we divide it all by 3 and have a think about what that equation would be, we'd have y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 7. So we could draw that on as well. That has got a negative gradient and it has got a y-intercept of 7. Now it's not very steep, but it is negative 2 thirds, so it would maybe look something like this. And again, this is just a sketch, and again the y-intercept there would be 7, and it was 0 down here. So you can actually see the triangle that we're looking at. We've got our point B over here that we need to find, we have our point A here where they intersect, and then you can see the triangle AOB is just here that is created via all these lines and the x-axis. So if we're going to go about working this out, first of all we want to find that point A. So the first thing that I would do is I would rearrange that first equation, which we've already done, and we have got y is equal to 4x. Now we know what y is equal to, we can substitute it into the other equation, rather than setting them equal to each other, which you could also do as well, but we can also just sub it into the other equation. So if we sub it into that first equation that we have over there, if y is equal to 4x, then 2x plus 3 lots of 4y, sorry, 3 lots of 4x, minus 21 is equal to 0. And now we've got an equation that just has x in it that we just need to solve. 2x and this is going to equal 12x, so that would be 14x, which is equal to, and add the 21 to the other side, 14x is equal to 21. We can now solve that by dividing by 14 and we get x is equal to 1.5 or you could leave that as 3 over 2. So we've got our x coordinate of where they intersect and obviously the equation there is y equals 4x. So y is going to equal 4 lots of 1.5. So y is equal to 4 times 1.5 and that is y is equal to 6. So we have our, our coordinate where the points intersect, and that coordinate is 1.5 and 6. And there we go, that is the first part of this question. We now know the height of the triangle. As the y coordinate there is 6, the height of that triangle must be 6. Now we just need to know the length of the base. So we need to know the coordinate of b, and once we've got the coordinate of b, we can just do the area of a triangle. So moving on to the next stage here, we're going to work out the coordinates of B. Now of course, to work out the coordinates of B, all we actually need to do here is find the X coordinate, as we already know that the Y coordinate is zero. So if we think about the line equation that that line is meeting down here, the line equation was that second one. 
So if we're going to substitute in a value, we can just substitute y equals 0. So if we do that, we get 2x plus 3 lots of 0. And again, that would just be 0, so we don't even need to write that. You can do if you want, but we could just leave it as that becomes 0. We're just going to get 2x minus 21 is equal to 0. Again, I'm just going to write here y equals 0, so you know that that's where y, that y piece has disappeared. We can add 21 to both sides. So 2x is equal to 21, and then dividing by 2, x is going to equal 10.5. Or, of course, you could leave that as 21 over 2. So the x coordinate at that point b, we've got x is equal to 10.5, which means that from 0 to 10.5, the base of our triangle is going to be 10.5. So we've got all the pieces that we need to finish this off, and the area of a triangle is half base times height, so we would just do for area half times 10.5 and multiply that by the height, which is 6. And if we type that into our calculator, it gives us a value as a fraction, 63 over 2. Or, of course, you could write that as a decimal. And there we go. We don't need to give any units as we are looking at the area problem on a coordinate grid. So our final answer would just be 63 over 2. And there we go. That is the final um, answer for this one. OK, so when we're modelling with straight line graphs, we just need to take the coordinates from the context of the question. So this question here says that a container is leaking with water at a constant rate. The water remaining is recorded at certain intervals. It says at, a st at the start, so we'll highlight that, the depth was 19.1. And after 100 seconds, the depth was 6.1. So you can see it's going down over time, and it says deduce, uh, deduce an equation in the form d equals at plus b, and interpret the meaning of the coefficients of a and b. So d in this case is our depth, and t is our time. And we're going to make an equation using those. So d equals at plus b. So in order to do this, we obviously need to get the gradient between those points. So if we are looking at the points, bearing in mind the start time there, s will equal 0. Or we could write that as t equals 0 as we are using t, so we'll have t is equal to 0. We've also got t is equal to 100 seconds here, and then we have our other numbers. So we have the depth here is equal to 19.1, and we have the depth over here is equal to 6.1. Now if we were to draw a little sketch of this, we could imagine what it looks like. And maybe we would have our depth going up the top, which would be the most logical, and time down the bottom. So the depth starts at 19.1, which we could draw up here, and then it is going to go down over time to the point where it's empty. So if we think about doing this, to get our gradient, we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our y coordinates here will be the depth. So we will do, and we can pick the 19.1 if we wanted to start, but we'll go with our second coordinate there, which is 6.1. So we'll have 6.1 take away 19.1, and that's going to be divided by the, the x coordinate, the second one, which is 100. So that'd be 100 take away 0. Now on the top there, that comes out as 13, or negative 13. And on the bottom, we have 100. So we can simplify that, or we could just type into our calculator, and that comes out as negative 0.13. So there we go, we have our gradient. Now we can put that into our line equation. And again, we can use our other coordinates, but we know that our gradient is going to be minus 0.13t. Uh, so, in order to write our equation, we could substitute our coordinates into our line equation, or for this particular question, we can actually get our y-intercept from the graph. And you can see here that at 0 seconds, it started at 19.1. So if we're going to write our line equation, we may as well just take the coordinate from there and write y is equal to, and in fact, we should keep our letters the same as the question has said, because it does say to give it as d is equal to. So we would say that the depth is equal to minus 0.13t plus the 19.1. So there is our linear equation, and there we go, and we've given it in the format that we've been asked. Now it does say to interpret the meaning of the coefficients. 
So if we look at the coefficients, we have the minus 0.13 in place of A. Now that is representing the change in the depth of the water every second, as we know it's in seconds. So we could write that down, the change in depth, we could say per second. There we go, the change in depth per second. And we have our y-intercept at the end in place of b, and that is the depth at the start. Okay, as given to us in the question. So depth at the start. So there we go, that is part A. Now part B has asked us something else. It says use the model to find the time when the container will be empty. In, or in other words, we want to know when D is equal to zero. So for part B, if we just put zero in place of D, then we've got an equation that we can solve. So if we say that zero is equal to minus 0.13 t plus 19.1 we just need to solve that now the easiest way to solve that would be to add the minus 1.0.13 t to the other side so we would have positive 0.13 t which is equal to 19.1 and then we would just divide both sides by 0.13 and we get a final answer which will give us our time and that time comes out as 146.9 so 146.9, and that is in seconds. So we would just write seconds at the end of that, 146.9 seconds. And there we go, that would be our final answer for finding the time when the depth is going to be zero, or in other words, when the container is empty. Okay, well done for making it to the end of the video. That was everything on straight lines. The next chapter topic is going to be looking at circles. So again, that will be linked for you in just a moment. But if this video was useful and helpful, please don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with one of your friends. Okay, so I will see you on the next chapter.